Hello, today I am going to talk about how to differentiate glucocorticoid myopathy with hypothyroid myopathy, um, which is really, really important for step two purposes and also step one. So let's get started. Before trying to differentiate the, the, the two of myopathies, we need to talk about whole different types of myopathies in general. This will make more clear to, to differentiate hypofibrin myopathy with glucocorticoid myopathy. So, we have inflammatory myopathies, which are polymyositis, derm dermatomyositis, and also polymyalgia rheumatica. Um, so, we also have fibromyalgia and hypothyroid myopathy and drug induced myopathies like glucocorticoid myopathy, statin myopathy, and other types of drug induced myopathies. So, I just want to indicate in here really rapidly that inflammatory myopathies and <clears throat> polymyalgia rheumatica are associated with increased ESR, which is really, really important to differentiate all of these. But hypothyroid myopathy and drug induced myopathy are not associated with ESR. And the last thing in here is fibromyalgia is not associated with any type of uh, marker, both, I mean, ESR and creatinine kinase. Fibromyalgia is not associated with both of these markers. So let's move on. So if you know that ESR has associated with these two, but not these three, you can easily differentiate in questions. So uh, you can easily um, eliminate some answers and move on. So this is the main point in my uh, topic in here. So, as I said before, glucocorticoid myopathy and hypothyroid myopathy have been associated with normal ESR. This is important. And glucocorticoid myopathy has associated with normal creatinine kinase, but hypothyroid myopathy has associated with increased creatinine kinase, which is really important for step two purposes. Actually, glucocorticoid myopathy could be associated with increased creatinine kinase too. So you may see some questions that increase CK, but also uh, glucocorticoid myopathy. But I can assure you that you will not face some questions only based creatinine kinase levels to differentiate between in these. So the most important thing in here is glucocorticoid myopathy and hypothyroid myopathy both associated muscle weakness. But in glucocorticoid myopathy, it is without pain. It is without pain. But in hypothyroid myopathy, there is muscle pain. And step two, always ask these questions with these two different di di differentiating points. If you see some questions related to hypothyroid myopathy, you will always see muscle pain, but not muscle pain in glucocorticoid myopathy. And in some case questions, you may also see some features of glucocorticoid toxicity, like what we've seen in Cushing, Cushing syndrome, but also in hypothyroid myopathy, you always see features of hypothyroidism like uh, constipation, like low energy. Step 2 loves to ask questions uh, about hypothyroid myopathy with features of uh, hypothyroidism. So it is really, really important to know these two and also this one. So glucocorticoid myopathy has not associated with pain, but hypothyroid myopathy has associated with muscle pain. And a question. Patients with hypercholesterolemia should have one, measurement prior to initiation of two, medications. So if you want to think about this question, please stop this video right now. But I am going to answer question as first is TSH and second is statin. So patients with hypercholesterolemia should have TSH measurement prior to initiation of statin medications. Why is that? Because 
Hypothyroidism has also associated lipid abnormality. So a patient has a lipid abnormalities, and if you directly give statin to him or her without assessing TSH, that may not treat anything because if we try to treat hypothyroidism first, it may also fix, it may also treat the lipid abnormalities too. And the second rationale here is even a patient has different type of lipid abnormalities that are not associated with hypothyroidism. And if you still not measure TSH before, before giving statin medication, it will further increase the risk of statin myopathy. So you know statins are associated with statin myopathy, but the risk is also further increased if you give a patient who has a concomitant untreated hypothyroidism. And the last side note, fibrates, which is another type of antilipid drug, also could cause myopathy. You may see some questions in step one about fibrates in this topic, but also there are CYP3A4 inhibitors. So if we combine fibrates with statins, because fibrates are CYP3A4 inhibitors, they will further increase the statin levels in blood. So Combination of fibers with statins also increases the risk of myopathy. So yes, uh, this was the last slide. I highly suggest you to create an Anki card related to the table that we talk uh, the main points between glucocorticoid myopathy and hypothyroid myopathy. So if you like my video, please subscribe and I wish you a great exam date, great step two and step one date. Thank you.